What's up, y'all? How's it going? Jason here from Nerding Around, and we have quite an interesting episode to talk about today. So, uh, for the essence of uh, saving time and doing all that other stuff, I'm going to go ahead and say three, two, one spoilers, and I'm going to flash it on the screen right now, just to warn people right now if you're curious about the this episode. Um, first things first, I need to make two uh, announcements. First announcement is that I apologize for the previous video. I had state, misstated something, and that was misstating the um, Saviors and Negan's faction are one and the same. I am quoted in saying that this is a multiple faction and we will meet Negan's group. And in fact, it's actually Negan's group is the Saviors. So, uh, second, I do apologize for this video coming out late. Uh, it was a bit of a busy week for me uh, with the election and then, of course, um, School, mainly. Um, I had a research project that was due, but enough of that. Let's go ahead and jump right into the video. So, um, let's talk about what's going on when the episode starts. Now, the episode, the sequence that starts the episode is kind of interesting to me. Um, because we are looking into what is, or what makes, the Savior's settlement different from other settlements that we see and of course it looks like they have farming it looks like they have medical and they have uh, food rationing and bread lines and, and just organized stuff to keep uh, individuals busy for that for the most part but we don't really see like downtime thing it seems to be a very much um, this is going to sound really weird for me to say it, but it's a very male-dominated settlement. Uh, there's a lot of, um, looks like, um, privilege to those who have a penis. <laughs> um, I know that sounds really funny for me to say, but uh, that's what it is. And I think, uh, I'll, I'll get to that comment later. But anyways, so we're starting to see the breakdown, the, 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 the makeup of the uh, compound itself or the settlement itself and we are actually following one particular character by the name of Dwight or I call him Scarface for obvious reasons if you haven't seen the episode um, but we've met Dwight before and and it was I want to say last season and it was him uh, uh, another, and two other women one of those women being his wife and the other one his sister-in-law and what we didn't know, or at least, at least I don't remember too much of that episode. I'm trying to remember it off the top of my head, but um, they were running. They were running from Negan's camp at that point, and this comes into play in this episode because we actually get some back, more background on Dwight himself. But anyways, so you know, a couple of questions come to mind. Well, one question comes into mind is who's Dwight? Who is this guy that we've seen him? Uh, had his junk bit and then he also been shot at and he's almost been blown up and then practically killed by Daryl. Who is he? Well, we see that Dwight is actually a... not an, he, He's not one of the regular peons. He's actually a up there lieutenant. This guy, he hustles around the compound a lot. I mean, he does his day-to-day -day and he makes sure that everyone stays in line, and even himself, you know, and I, I guess you, you kind of get a glimpse into Dwight and in this entire episode for uh, several reasons, and I'll make those apparent. Well, for one thing, is that we get to meet Dwight the person, all right? We get to see him and who he is, not this bad guy that we just want to hate, uh, the the right the 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 episode really gives us a chance to make up our own opinion of Dwight, but you know, but anyways, so the opening sequence shows Dwight going around the compound, taking whatever he wants, cutting in lines and bread lines, and he's making himself a sandwich, something that's like something that's that's probably mundane to us, but I'm sure it would be something spectacular in uh, in this kind of scenario, and what does it all mean i mean uh it's 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 interesting because you you it it's a lot of privilege that goes in there uh and he's also watching other individuals who are putting up a 
quote unquote uh, defense line of walkers and why are they doing that and they're wearing jumpsuits and it, it's it's all very confusing and, and it all gets later on explained in uh, the episode so that's pretty much the opening it, it gives you a lot of questions and what's going on and then not to mention you also see that they have electricity as well uh, because Dwight is watching reruns of Who's the Boss? Of all things to be watching during the zombie apocalypse um, is Who's the Boss episodes. I mean, maybe, sure, yeah, that's probably all you can find. And I want to say that it was a VCR, which is crazy. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think uh, I would want to keep my VCR as well. Uh, I have a couple of them uh, somewhere around here uh, in storage. But the fact is that, they're, you know, I think the VCR would probably outlast the DVD in that kind of situation. But anyways... Um, because VHS tapes are just so freaking strong. It's ridiculous. <laughs> um, but anyway, so let's go ahead and move into the actual episode, though. The actual episode, well, there's a couple of talking points that I wanted to get into. And the episodes was mainly about Dwight, but also a comparison between Dwight and Daryl. Uh, and stick with me on this uh, because there are some there are some minor uh, similarities and, and of course vast majority of differences but also the comparison between the compound of the kingdom and the saviors and other little things about and more backstory about on Dwight so Let's go ahead and talk about the first thing that I felt like that was the really core aspect of the episode, and that was the breaking down of Daryl. So, past the opening sequence, we come across Daryl. <coughs> we come across Daryl, and he's in a cell, dark, naked. I'm sure the fangirls love to get a little side cheek action, I'm sure. Um, but we... We see that Dwight's been feeding him dog food sandwiches. And I mean, that's not a nickname. It's an actual sandwich made of dog food. And breaking, trying to break him down into a regular Negan follower. I, that, that's, that's the whole point of this uh, um, torture session. And we see that Daryl goes through all these different... Um, mini torture sessions where they blast loud music constantly annoying music annoying songs i watched this episode roughly three times and each time i would see the scenes with daryl and he's trapped in this room and they're playing this loud music and i am thinking to myself i'm going to go crazy just by listening to it over and over again and it's it's not even like whole segments of the song well it's not the whole song it's it's small segments and then it's just blasted really loud and I believe the song is called Easy Street, and it was, I think, part of the Broadway show Annie. I'm not too sure. Um, I googled it, and, and Annie the musical popped up, but I might be wrong. So, the whole point of this was to break Daryl. Daryl is still reeling from the guilt, because uh, Dwight is reminding him, probably on a constant basis like look your actions got your friend killed and he's being reminded all the time and he has to sit in the darkness and he has nothing else to do but to think and that that's done on purpose they they want him to blame himself they want him to shut down and accept the programming that's going to be coming from Negan's guys and to the point to where he just wants to be out of the cell do stuff work and forget about what happened in the past. But it doesn't happen. Daryl um, Daryl has this commitment towards Glenn now. And, and, and granted, yes, Glenn is dead. But he, he, he feels responsible for Maggie. And he also feels that he has to answer for his crimes in some way. Because I'm, I'm sure that's what he feels like. He feels like he's he himself has destroyed this soon-to-be family which were his friend and it's really just all his fault and you see that throughout the entire episode he is just emotionally scarred but he's not showing it to Dwight or to any of the uh, 
other of Negan's men. And it comes down to actually a showdown between Negan and Daryl, which was something that I was actually looking forward to. I saw it in the teasers, I saw it in the trailer, and I was like, all right, there is going to be a confrontation. Now, whether it's physical or not, it doesn't matter. It's just the fact that there's going to be a confrontation between Daryl and Negan. And it went the way that I, I expected it to go both times because there were two confrontations. The first time, Daryl attempted to escape. And when he tried to escape, it was kind of like it was done on purpose to let him escape. And then he ran into uh, Shelly, or I believe it's... Um, Sorry, Sherry. He runs into Sherry. And Sherry, we met her before, and she was in the previous episode with Dwight and his sister in law. The Sherry is his wife. And she's explaining to Daryl, like, look, you need to run, you need to get out of here, you need to leave. She is giving him this advice, full knowing that if he stays, it's going to be really bad for him. And if he gets caught, it's going to be even worse. So he has to make sure he escapes and never comes back. So it looks like he doesn't want to take her advice, but she, he goes anyway. And it almost seems like a setup, in my opinion. The first time I watched it around, it looked like a setup. The second and third time, I was like, you know what? No, she was being sincere. She was actually being sincere. And for, for good reason, too. Um, but I'll talk about... Uh, I'll talk about her later. So Daryl attempts to escape by hopping on a motorcycle, and he is surrounded by Negan's men, and Negan comes and shows up with Lucille. And I'm thinking in my mind, like, oh, man, this is it. Daryl's going to get, you know, he's going to have his butt handed to him on a silver platter. This is not going to end well. And it went as expected. Like I said, um... Negan propositions Daryl and says, you know what, hey, look, man, you can live like a king. You can, you can, all you gotta do is work for me, and you just gotta answer one simple question. And then, so he goes around, and he starts pointing to his other henchmen, and he's like, who are you? And the henchman responds, Negan, and all the other ones do the exact same thing, proving to the point that he is everywhere. Negan is everyone. Um... And Daryl didn't answer the question. He just, you know, he didn't, he stayed quiet. And it was, it was a great performance by Jeffrey Dean Morgan and uh, Norman Reedus just on this tension filled scene. So he goes for a wind up with his bat and Daryl doesn't even flinch, D doesn't even flinch. He was, he was going to take those lumps and... Uh, Negan smiles and says, you know, you don't scare easily. I like that. And, you know, it's just this weird, um, I don't know, it's this weird attitude that Negan has that, that scares me a little bit because he's very okay with defiance and he's comfortable with it probably because he knows that, you know what, I'm still going to kill you in the end. So it doesn't matter. You can put on a show all you want. It's, it's only a matter of time. But anyways, so Daryl gets jumped by all of Negan's goons and gets thrown back into the cell. The second confrontation happened towards the end of the episode, and he's basically telling Daryl, like, you know, hey, look, I like you. There's something about you. There's this little spark about you that I really like. All you have to do is answer that single question. Who are you? And for a very tense moment after the entire episode of what Daryl has been through, I was thinking to myself, well, is Daryl going to play it smart and just say, yes, I'm Negan, or is he going to stand firm? And by my, uh, you know, all that is awesome, Daryl stood his ground, and he just responded, I'm Daryl. And this, the, the face that, that Negan made was amazing, was awesome. I, I, I probably, I, I was smiling after that point, and I couldn't wait to see what was going to happen in the next couple of episodes when we see this uh, trade-off between the two characters again. 
And it seems like I'm getting close to running out of time, so I'm going to go ahead and talk up on uh, one other point here. And if I'll probably make a second video just to go ahead and talk about the rest. We'll see what happens. So the other point that I want to talk about is the the theme of the episode. All right, the ultimate theme of the episode was Dwight and Daryl. That those two are alike, and the reason that they're alike is because they both have someone that they are responsible for, and that is Dwight is responsible for his wife Sherry. Why? Because when they ran from Negan's camp, Dwight gave up and returned. And when he returned, he had to face the consequences. The rules were as follows. But his wife stepped in and said, you know what? Don't kill Dwight. I will marry you. Because Negan was going after Sher uh, Sherry's uh, sister-in-law. I can't remember her name. But she had blonde hair, short hair. Uh, blonde, short hair. Uh, she died in the last season. And so Negan accepted this offer, and but still scarred up Dwight's face because he still had to pay. He, you know, it was a sweet deal for for Negan, and you know, so far. And so there, there is this tension throughout the entire episode between Negan and Dwight, and for good reason because Negan is banging Dwight's wife, and you know, it, it's. And they they act so chummy, and it's 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 cringy. That's that's the that's the that's the best that way that I can describe it. And with Daryl, Daryl is responsible for Maggie, or he's responsible to Maggie. He's also responsible to Cheryl and the rest of the group. And this is the reason why. This is the reason why he tells Dwight, "Look, I get why you gave up. I understand completely. You were responsible. You did it because you cared for someone." The reason I'm not giving up is because is the same reason I care for someone. And you see this correlation between Dwight and Daryl where it comes to a head in this exact moment. And you see that, I mean, Dwight is a bit of a loner. He goes off by himself for good reason. He has this dark past. And when you find out what's going on with Dwight, they want you to feel sorry. And to be completely honest, I feel for the guy. I honestly do. But he had a choice. And... He could have continued on running, but he accept he eventually accepted the fact that Negan's everywhere. He will eventually own everything, as he told another character before he killed them. Um, but I feel like I've talked about everything that was at least important. I haven't quite decided if I'm going to make a second video or not. And I probably will because there were some other things. Like the re relationship between Negan and Dwight was kind of important. Um, and then just the whole point that Jeffrey Dean Morgan... He's an amazing actor, and I think he plays Negan very well. There's this awkward fatherly love and then humor between Negan and Dwight, or just Negan, period. Just these little jokes that he cracks. Um, for example, uh, Dwight's been hustling. Negan notices and says, you know what? Hey, you can choose whatever woman you want, and you can go ahead and sleep with her. You know, And... Um, Dwight says, no, I'm good, I'm good. And then, you know, Negan's like, hey, do you want to blast from the past? Referring to his wife, which is, for me, it, like, it, it made me so angry. I wanted to punch Negan in the face because I don't know what I would do in that kind of situation. I'd probably punch Negan in the face or I'd look at him real awkwardly. Um, and it, it, he's like, no, no, I'm good, I'm good. And he's like, oh, yeah, I forgot. He, he bit you down there your penis it just it just made me crack a smile just the way it was delivered and it's, it's something about that it, it, it kind of just reminds me of like awkward dad humor for some odd reason but anyways my time is cutting short here guys i do appreciate if you like uh what you see go ahead and give me a thumbs up and um i will see you in another video guys take care peace